Hi everyone. This is my second lecture of microbiology. In this second lecture, I would like to talk about the structure of bacteria cell wall and the mode of action of penicillin. So today my main focus will be on bacteria cell wall structure, its basic components and how the penicillin and spelosporin inhibit the cell wall synthesis and today i will dis of us also describe briefly about the mode of action of penicillin so let's talk about the what is the basic types of bacteria so these are the shapes of bacteria or you can say types of bacteria this is a cocci bacteria this is a bacilli bacteria and then the other types of bacteria with different shapes so first of all i would like to talk about cocci so this is a cocci bacteria cocci they will be positive they can be negative and in the cocci this is example of cocci we call streptococcus pneumoniae which is a cocci bacteria then there is staphylococcus aureus this is also a cocci bacteria and then there is a streptococcus pyogen which can cause which can cause pus that's we call pyogenic streptococcus bacteria this is a streptococcus pneumoniae this will mildly minimally cause pussy infection but this streptococcus pyogen that cause pus infection then there is a bacilli in bacilli examples of bacillus anthrax and then there is salmonella typhi it is also a bacilli bacteria so these also example of bacilli then there is a spore form like clostridium botulinum so this is also a, it can also a type of bacilli then there are other bacteria we call vibrio cholera which can cause toxin or which can cause diarrhea as well then there is a spirilla bacteria example of this will be h pylori so these two are the basic types and then there is according to shape this is also according to shape this is also according to shape because this is a cocci and then this is a bacilli and this other will be different shapes so in different shape this is also a same thing that cocci bacteria like circular bacilli mean rod shape and then there is a curved rod this is also a horizontal shape you can say and this is a clear cut rod bacteria and then this is a pleomorphic so example of this pleomorphic it means that there is no typical cell wall when there is a no typical cell wall we call pleomorphic so pleomorphic what's the example like mycoplasm pneumoniae which is an example of pleomorphic in mycoplasm pneumoniae there is no typical cell wall so i hope you understand now i will talk about the what's the basic structure of bacterial cell wall starting from the inside inside is what cytoplasm then there is a bile bile layer lipid membrane we call phospholipid then there is a peptidoglycan this is the outer part this is the inner part in the inner part there is a cytoplasm contain ribosome and dna and this is a bile lipid layer phospholipid and this is the peptidoglycan so this peptidoglycan is the basic component of cell wall this pep cell wall basic component peptidoglycan it means what this chain is composed of amino acid and this chain is composed of glucose that's why we call peptidoglycan unit so this is a one peptidoglycan unit this is a another this is a another so this peptidoglycan this and this peptidoglycan connected with each other through this peptidase enzyme we call transpeptidase enzyme so the enzyme work here and they connect the name and name and also connect with the name and name this is also a basic unit so this peptide and this peptide connected with each other through a enzymatic reaction that enzymatic reaction we call what transpeptide transpeptidation so this transpeptidation helps the this basic component to connect with each other and this space we call what periplasm so what's the importance why i am discussing this point very deeply because importance of that is penicillin and spelosporin act on that point when they act on that point there will be no cross link between nam and nam between nam and nag when there is no cross linking between nam and nam so there is no proper cell wall there is no cell wall proper linkage when there is no proper cell wall linkage so it means cell wall disrupted so penicillin and spelosporin inhibit the enzyme 
that enzyme work here so when they inhibit the enzyme like peptide peptidase transpeptidase enzyme when they inhibit the enzyme enzyme will never do transpeptidation so there is this chain will not be formed in the presence of penicillin and sphenosporin when drug will not drug will interrupt the formation of this chain so there is no proper cell wall integrity so the question is here what's the main function of this cell wall actually the main function of this cell wall first is just to maintain the shape and structure of cell wall and important function will be just to inhibit the burst because inside the cytoplasm there is a hyper osmotic so in the outside there is a hyposmetic for example if bacteria dead bacteria present in the pharynx in the throat in the throat so bacteria present in the throat so bacteria extracellular environment will be what hypoosmotic and inside is what hyperosmolar so this hyperosmolar will suck or take the fluid from extracellular and bring into the intracellular due to inside the presence of hyperosmotic so this cell wall don't allow this in cytoplasm to expand more because when cytoplasm expand more so they will rupture or they will disrupt so they become destroyed so actually this cell wall maintain or they inhibit the osmotic burst that produced due to the hyperosmotic which are present inside the cytoplasm what's the role of hyperosmotic it just take the water from hypoosmolar environment to the hyperosmolar environment so this is the main function of cell wall then there is a spherical shape bacteria like streptococcus then there is a rod shape bacteria example is salmonella typhi okay now i will talk about the what's the difference between gram negative and gram positive bacteria in gram negative bacteria actually there is a one there is a inner cell membrane and then there is a extra outer cell membrane so this is a benefit for gram negative bacteria that it have two cell membrane inner cell membrane and outer between them there is a peptidoglycan same which i already discussed in the structure of bacterial cell wall so peptidoglycan mean peptide mean amino acid and glycan mean sugar so peptidoglycan is a combination of sugar and amino acid so that's why gram negative bacteria so most of the antibiotics will never damage that gram negative bacteria because presence of this outer cell membrane so most of the so this gram negative bacteria resist the antibiotics because it, that bacteria have outer cell membrane as well as inner cell membrane so it resist the bacteria that it resist the antibiotic because antibiotic will never work on that so that gram negative bacteria is also produce toxin which we i will discuss later okay and this this is a gram positive in gram positive bacteria inner cell membrane but there is no outer cell membrane and but there is a peptidoglycan but there is no outer cell membrane so even narrow spectral antibiotic or broad spectral antibiotic can work on dead gram positive bacteria why because there is no barrier inner barrier is present but there is no another barrier which barrier present in gram negative bacteria so most of the antibiotic work on dead gram positive bacteria so when most antibiotic work on dead gram positive bacteria so they easily kill the bacteria one thing remember when the bacteria multiply then antibiotic work properly because some antibiotic will be bactericidal like you can say vancomycin sphenosporin penicillin metronidazole these all are the bactericidal they killing the bacteria why when when they kill the bacteria when bacteria multiply because already form bacteria antibiotic will never destroy their bacteria properly but when bacteria uh, multiply into daughter bacteria then that daughter bacteria there is no proper cell wall so that antibiotic work properly so antibiotic work when when there is a multiplication of bacteria so multiplication lead to thin or loose bacterial cell wall so it can work easily so i hope so you understand so this is the very main point here that why why antibiotic work on the newly formed bacteria then 
comparison of gram positive and gram negative bacteria so gram positive bacteria contain only one cell wall that is made of peptidoglycan but as compared to gram negative which is only uh, gram negative bacteria which is extra cell membrane that prevent many antibiotic to work on it and there is no endotoxin production of gram positive bacteria but there is endo there is endotoxin produced which i will discuss later see this is the gram negative bacteria structure in negative structure this is the inner membrane or cytoplasmic membrane this is a peptidoglycan this is the outer membrane which are present in gram negative bacteria that is not present in gram positive bacteria this thing keep in mind so this outer membrane so collectively we call what lipopolysaccharide this lipopolysaccharide this this is the outer membrane in the outer membrane there is also a phospholipid this is a lipid this is a phosphate so this is also a phospholipid this is a peri this is a periplasmic space and this one is a phospho this is a lipid so this is also a phospholipid the but the major component which clinically modify the function of negative bacteria or toxin that is so this is a major component we call lipopolysaccharide what's the meaning of lipopolysaccharide mean what it has a it has a lipids like this is a lipids and this is a polysaccharide so this polysaccharide we call o polysaccharide and core polysaccharide so this polysaccharides and this lipid this lipid we call lipid a so this lipid a and this polysaccharide collectively we call what lipopolysaccharide so this is the major function of gram positive this is the major structure of gram negative bacteria that it have extra cell wall extra cell membrane because gram positive is up just up to here but gram negative is further extension so this is the outer membrane it is a importance of gram negative bacteria so in further important this is also a lipopolysaccharide so i will discuss later what is a lipopolysaccharide so up to now just know in the outer membrane there is a one is a lipopolysaccharide and the other is a phospholipid now i am discussing in detail what is a lipopolysaccharide actually the structure of lipopolysaccharide is that lipid a this is a lipid a that is composed of fats and disaccharide this is the main component which produce endotoxemia or which produce endotoxin inside the blood gram positive never produce endotoxin because gram positive bacteria don't have lipid a st structure or component but gram negative bacteria have lipid a structure that clinically differentiate the gram negative from gram positive bacteria so that lipid a produce endotoxin so this is a component lipid a it include glucose and peptide that's why we call what so this is a disaccharide pore and this is the outer which we call o antigen this this one is the o antigen okay this is a lipid a this lipid a this small lipid a i am discussing here this this lipid a so that lipid a which so that lipid a contain what glucose and lipids so this is a lipid a molecule which which help the bacteria to produce endotoxin so question is here what's the difference between endotoxin and bacteremia actually bacteremia normally in every day uh, in our throat there is a bacteria but there is no endotoxemia when the bacteria present our immune system remove that bacteria without any infection so this we call bacteremia every day when you brush the teeth so many bacteria can present in the throat but so without causing any infection our immune system just eliminate that bacteria but what is the endotoxemia endotoxemia is a condition when bacteria present inside the circulation it multiply immune system activated and cause infection and endotoxemia lead to septic shock so septic shocks common cause will be endotoxemia gram negative bacteria so when our we give antibiotic against gram negative bacteria so when gram negative bacteria destroy 
when it damage it release endotoxin because damaged bacteria release endotoxin that endotoxin further lead to in uh, what septic shock and they can lead to death so this gram negative this lipid a component is a major cause of septicemia in icu or cc ward as well so this is the mode of action of penicillin and spelosporin on bacterial cell wall see this is a transpeptidase this is also a transpeptidase this is a name this is a name so it connect with each other through this word transpeptidase we call transpeptidase reaction so spelosporin action here spelosporin also penicillin action here so name and name when connected with each other through transpeptidase enzyme but when spelosporin and penicillin come here they inhibit the formation of this cross linking so when they inhibit the cross linking so bacterial cell wall is not properly formed so i hope you understand and thank you